Hello and welcome back to Journey Beyond. Today we will be previewing the Gemini 2. So I just got this off of HSN, you guys. I was debating if it's something that I wanted. It's definitely something I did not need. But um, I was kind of interested to see the new product. Um, just because it had like the swivel on the bottom and some of the other features it had. So here I am. I'm unboxing. Um, the box. So here is the core product catalog. So these are just some items that you can purchase in addition to the Gemini 2 that are available. Um, I think they're available now. I really haven't looked at it. I just looked at some, most of the items in there I actually have already. So I think it's just showing you things that um, you could buy or some of the other products that they do offer. And then here it comes with a little thank you um, note and that you're a proud new owner of the Gemini 2. And then here is the user guide. So a lot of the sandwiches in there that I looked at, they're very similar to the original Gemini. Um, and then this is your don't forget to register your Gemini 2, which I have not done yet. <laughs> and I guess I will. So um, if you did buy your machine off of HSN, you will um, be included in the club that they have. And I guess it's for like um, Facebook, groups and like projects that you can be in on that um, they can show you some stuff. But here I am, I'm going through the booklet and sorry, I'm zooming in with my camera there. I'm going through the booklet and then it shows you like the sandwiches and like, I think it's in a couple different languages, Spanish and I think French. I'm not really sure I didn't really look at it. The other languages to be honest, so. Um, and then this is Welcome to the Gemini 2 and I think this is about their club, so. And here in the first box is the plates, so I'm going to take out the plates here. And I had already kind of pre-opened the tape there just so it'd be easier for filming so I could just pop those plates right out. And I'm zooming out there. So these plates are interesting. So with the original Gemini, you have the two clear cutting plates, the metal shim, rubber embossing mat, and the, mat, and the magnetic shim. Here, this is a clear, um, shim instead of the white shim that is the flimsy <laughs> rubber embossing mats just like the other one this is the magnetic shim so this looks very similar to the previous one and then these white plates are the two cutting plates so these are different and then if you watched Sara's um, preview on this when she showed this on HSN she explains to you why they're white so it has something to do with the optical sensor so this is the power plug and then I'm taking um, just the stuff out of the box so you can see and this machine is heavy it took me a minute to get it out I was trying to think of the best way to get it out so I didn't hit the camera <laughs> as well as I was taking it out so just be mindful of that if you haven't um, taking yours out or if you um, if you decided to purchase it um, it is a little heavy so um, I don't know about the um, gliding feet um, I really didn't try to move it that way but they said that if you're trying to move your machine across the table that it will glide smoother because of the gliding feet it does have on the bottom and here I'm showing you the back so here it says Gemini 2 and then it has three USB ports so that's to like plug in your phone and your tablet it has the power outlet and the off and on switch and then as you can see I'm rotating it there for you to see that it does swivel all the way around which is nice so you have a light indicator a power button a go forward button and a reverse button so just as the original Gemini, um, the sensors will sense the plates as you put them in and it will accept them. You don't have to push the button like you have to do on some other machines. So these are the glide feet that I was talking about and then that's the little swivel on the base and that comes with all the um, machines that were purchased through HSN and then the serial number there is on the bottom. So that is a nice feature um, that I did like. Then there I was showing you where you can prop up your tablet and then that is opening the sides. And then if you lift up those raspberry um, 
plate things right there that shows you some storage and you can store on both sides. It has storage on both sides. Which is nice, but I don't tend to store anything in my machines, like even my other machines, like my Cricut. I don't store anything in there. And it has like some other storage space right there that you can utilize if you want to put something in there. And then here in a few minutes, I am going to show you um, some additional features. And there again, I'm showing you the tablet, how it opens and closes, or the ledge for your tablet. But I am going to show you um, right here. So this is an iPad 12.9 inch Pro. So this does have a case on it. It doesn't have the folding top because my husband broke it. This is his iPad actually. So that actually does fit because it's nice and thin. So it does fit. If you have a thinner case, it won't have any problems. But if you have a thicker case, like an OtterBox, it probably will not fit. Just FYI, it won't fit on there correctly. So that is Apple. But wait a minute. <laughs> I'm going to show you a different tablet. <clears throat> so this is my tablet I'm about to show you. This is a Samsung. And this is a 14-inch tablet. I do have a little bit of a thicker... Um, case on there so I'm gonna show you how this does not fit <laughs> it will prop up on the machine as you can see um, it took me a couple times to try I just kind of so this one on this particular case I have a handle carrying case a carrying handle on the back and I, I kind of just like prop it up on that and like kind of hang it over where it's supposed to slide on too so as I'm showing you I'm kind of using that and it kind of stays I mean it's not gonna be a um, it's not going to be a steady, like sturdy state. It's not going to fit in there correctly, but it does stay on there because I just kind of like wedged it up against the little platform, but it does not fit in the ledge. So as I'm showing you there, it does not fit in the ledge. So if you do have a bigger tablet, just keep that in mind. So anything that's under 12.9 or as you see here, this is a 12.9 uh, iPad Pro, it will fit as long as it does have a thin case on it. So here now I'm showing you the power cord. So this power cord does differ from the original Gemini. The original Gemini has two prongs, so this is three prongs. So three prongs normally means it requires a lot more power, so just so you know what that means. So um, you can plug this into a power outlet, and I know a lot of times we don't think about that, but just be careful when you do that because because the machine does require more power, you don't want anything to trip. I would advise if you're going to plug it into a power outlet to make sure it has a surge protector. Um, so if you can, plug it into a wall. And then here I'm showing you where it connects in the back. Right there, I turn it on. thought I turned it on there we go when you see the green light come on you will know that it's on so <laughs> sorry it's a little shaky I have my um, my camera set up I got a new camera set up so I was testing it out with the new Gemini 2 so it is a little shaky and I apologize for that but you will see the green indicator light when the machine is on so that's how you know it's on And then here again, I'm just opening the machine, just pulling the side plates down. And I am going to do a couple demonstrations here. Sorry again about the shakiness of the camera. The next time I do a film or video, it will not be shaking, so I can assure you. But okay, so this is the True Love collection. I did the auto ship, so I will get the additional shipments. Um, that come with the auto ship. I think there's like six of them. I'm not, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head what they are. But I really like the way this packaging came. So as you can see here, um, it says 10 pieces. So at first I was like, 10 pieces? <laughs> there's only five. But if you turn it around, there's stamps on the back too. And I zoomed in there so you guys can see. And then um, that's just a thank you card for purchasing. And this is a flower, and then this is some type of tree or plant, and this is some stamps with a heart, 
Jasmine in love. I remember I have those stamps. Did you guys see those stamps? They made some stamps like that a few years ago. They're individual. I have those. And that's an envelope. That's a stencil of a dress. Very pretty. Embossing folder. Really like that one. There's some additional stamps. Be mine. True love. I love you. Sweetheart. So this could be used for Valentine's Day or anniversary, anything like that, or just an I love you card. That is a edgeable. And this is their die has a boy and a girl on a tree. And this is their beautiful pattern paper. So I absolutely love paper. I love pretty paper. So this is right up my alley. That looks to me like a country wedding type scene. I love it. So pretty. Actually a lot of my wedding colors and theme kind of look like this but my wedding was held in the fall so my colors were like fall colors but like that theme was very similar to the invitations that I sent out for my wedding. And then this is their cardstock, the coordinating, coordinating cardstock that goes with pattern paper some very pretty colors there. I will say as of lately, especially lately in the last couple of years, their cardstock is phenomenal. I love everything, how they mix and match and everything goes together. All the solid colors go with the colors in the patterns of their pattern cardstock. So I'm putting everything back here and I think in the last minute I realized from the very first one I pulled out that there's stamps in the back because at first I was like, wait, what? <laughs> There's only five dies here. Why does it say 10 pieces? But yeah, see, here I go. So yep, there, as you can see, there's those four pieces. There's the die in the front and then the three stamps in the back. And on this one, then you have the accordion stamps in the back. So it is 10 pieces there. So this is a user guide I'm referring to. So we're gonna, I'm gonna do some demonstrations for you. So we're gonna cut a few things. We're gonna do some embossing folders so you can see what that looks like. Here I'm just going over um, the embossing folder sandwich. And it's telling you what, what shims to use, or I mean what plates to use in that configuration. So here I'm doing just a 2D embossing folder. It's very pretty. It's um, I think it's just one she came out with a few years back. <clears throat> it has some writing and then some tulips on the front. So it's your cutting plate, your magnetic shim. Or no, no, I'm just showing you the plates. Okay, so it's your base plate, your magnetic shim, and then your clear shim. And I think in the embossing, you don't use the other cutting plate, if that's correct. I'm just going over to make sure I'm reading it to make sure that is right. I know a lot of people have like tips and tricks and how they do like certain types of embossing folders from other companies, but usually I go by the user manual the first time around, a couple times around that I use it. So here we go. So. Something interesting is going to happen here. Watch this, you guys. So as you can see, the clear plate just came through, and I was like, what? So that was kind of interesting how it didn't go all the way through. So here I am. I'm pulling it back, and then I'm going to go and, like... And as you can see in that flash right there, I don't know if you guys saw that, but um, I had the metal shim in there and I didn't even realize it at the time. But here I am, I'm gonna put it through again. And this time it goes through and I don't know if I just didn't have a good handle on it or why that plate slipped through the first time. That was interesting. But here we go, so we're gonna take this off. I'm gonna show you what this looks like. And I actually think I had the folder the wrong way. I had it the other way. So 
it's beautiful. It came out great. So it debossed on the front. And then as you can see the back. So I did notice um, a little bit of warping. So I'm not one of those people. I don't like spray my paper with water or do anything um, like that before I emboss. So, so here we're going to try again. So now I'm going to try with some silver uh, Mary card and I have it, the folder turned around the right way. So we can see how that's going to look embossed. So I noticed too, like when I got the plates, even though they were in that um, folder, they were kind of dirty as I took them out. So not sure what happened there. So again, your base plate, your full, your embossing folder with your cardstock, your magnetic shim, and your clear shim. So we're going to go ahead and put that through again. And I love that you can just turn that to the side. Isn't that fantastic? I love that. So I'm going to go ahead and take it off from there. See, and this one came out better. As you can see, though, it still has some warping on the paper as I'm turning it and I'm showing you in the light what it looks like. Especially on the gold, you can see it a lot more. But they both came out really good. Those are definitely like things I can use for backgrounds that I'm planning to use for future cards. Definitely not throwing that away. Very pretty. Um, but you can see the warping right there as I turn the paper over onto the white side. So next, we're going to try something else. So I'm going to flip through my little book here and see, um, I think I do some die cutting next. Sorry you guys, I had to do a voiceover for this one because my microphone that I usually use when I'm filming <clears throat> wasn't working. So. so we're going to go ahead and die cut these pieces from the True Love kit. So I'm going to do a few pieces so you can see how they cut. I actually demo a few things in here so you guys can see the differences and embossing and die cutting and um, actually do another embossing folder for you from a different company so you can see how that comes out too. Okay guys, here we go. So I am going to use two different types of cardstock. One is just pattern paper. The other one is some matte, I think it's matte Mary. It could be just regular Mary card. But I'm doing um, just the regular stitched heart and then the three little hearts just to see how they come out, cut out of two different types of paper. So here I am, as you can see, I have a mess to the left of me where I have everything, all the machine, everything that came with the machine is on that side. So I'm just going through the book. I'm looking at the correct sandwich for the dies so I can see what plates to use. So we're going to use our plastic shim, our magnetic shim, I believe just the cutting plate. I don't think we use the metal shim at all. And I'm making sure that it's not there this time because the first time um, I did put the metal shim when I did the embossing folder and I did not realize it was behind the magnetic shim. So I'm just making sure that they are in the correct order. And I definitely did not rotate my plates, I think, in any of these demonstrations. I totally forgot to do that. But I love that I could just turn the machine like that. That is fantastic. Makes it a lot easier.
So here I'm just taking all the little pieces of the three hearts. And then here, just the uh, stitched heart from the pattern paper. Oops, sorry about that big shake. I think I hit the, the camera stand next to me. So I'm going to put these in my hand and I'm going to lift them up to the camera so you can see the detail in them. So as you can see, like that stitching is there. It's beautiful. So it actually cut like butter. Um, it cut really, really well. So I did like that. I'm going to just put those off to the side for you. And then I'm showing you the plate there. It did leave an impression just like, you know, you would expect on any cutting plate. When you're, and I cut it into the front of the plate. I wasn't paying attention to what side I put it on, but it doesn't really matter, honestly. So, And here I have the edge of bowl. This is the heart. So I actually don't demonstrate it on the edge of the card. <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking when I did this. So I, um, I think I was originally trying to leaf through the book because I was going to try to do um, some of the embossing um, just to show you like the embossed detail. But then I realized I did not <laughs> the way it cuts. So I can't really show you the embossing detail on an edge of bowl. So. As you're going to see here in a few minutes, I go ahead and cut it and then realize that I can't show you that embossing detail and then I'm going to switch to another die here, but we'll go ahead and see so you guys can see how it cut the edgeable, which it cut beautifully, so um, I have no complaints there. It is a beautiful die. I did buy a set of these back, I think a couple years ago she had these. Um, for sale she had like different, Sarah had... Um, a different variation she had like stars and bubbles and hearts and different things I think she had butterflies I mean I have so many crafter companion projects it's ridiculous <laughs> but yeah as you can see here I am um, putting this positioning this on the um, matte mirror card and I think I did this because it fit on that piece of paper but like I said when I was thinking about the demonstration I wouldn't really think it through because I was thinking, how am I going to show them this embossing detail, like, when you'll see here in a second. I realized, like, oh, wait, that's not going to work. <laughs> so we're just going to go ahead and go through this just so you guys can see how it came out. So here I am, like, thinking about it, like, hmm, right? And then I'm going to change my mind and be like, oh, wait, no, I can't do that. <laughs> so... So here now I am just putting it through, realizing that I do have to cut this first before I can emboss it. So it cut beautifully, but when I lift this off, then you see it, then you'll see like where the realization came in, like, oh wait, nope, can't do that. So here I am getting ready, thinking that I'm gonna emboss this until I take it the die off the cardstock. And there it is where I lift it up and I realize, wait, I can't show this embossing detail. I was actually going to edit this part out of the video, but I did not because I wanted you guys to see how it does cut. It is beautiful. It cut the way it's supposed to. And then you can just see me <laughs> like, dang it. So here I switch scenes and I'm going to cut out a different die one that I can boss so you can see the detail so this is a carriage from the storybook um, collection that Sara just released her storybook or fairy tale collection they are once upon a time collection um, so I haven't got a chance to play with that yet I have I've been overwhelmed just trying to organize my craft room and 
get things together and um, my life's a little bit more on track than it has been. Like, I feel like every time I film and I'm like, yeah, I'm back, something always comes up and then I'm just not able to film for months and months at a time. It's been a long time since I made a video, you guys. So just bear with me. Thank you for your patience and all the people who've stayed. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thank you guys. All right, so here we go. So first here, I'm going to cut the die out. And I do actually end up embossing this die so you can see the detail in the die. So here I am going to emboss the die. So for embossing the die, you're gonna need your um, cutting plate, your white cutting plate, your embossing mat, and then I believe, let's see, I'm reading the, the guide there. So then you're going to need your cardstock and die, so you would just leave it attached. So after you cut it, you just leave it attached, as it is, as you see right there. You're gonna use your clear shim and your top cutting plates. So we're gonna go ahead and run that through. See, I love that feature, just being able to turn it and just take it right out. I'm gonna go ahead and take the die cut off here. So again, this just cut like butter and what I was really impressed with this die, um, this die isn't super intricate, but it did have some small pieces in there. And I really didn't have to, I didn't have to brush any of them out. I didn't have to use my um, little weeding tool to poke anything out. Um, I'm just taking it off. You can't see it right now, but um, I was really impressed with it. So I did, um, there was like a few pieces I think in the wheel, but overall for the most part, I didn't really have to use it to poke anything else out. So I was really impressed with that. So I'm really excited to try a super intricate die, which I haven't yet. So and there, I'm just taking off the tape and there we go. And then I'm going to bring it up to the camera so you can see. Trying to get this straight and focus it, and I'm actually zooming in. And then look at that. It was just beautiful. All the intricacy. Yeah, I just had a few things in the wheels there that I poked out, but look at that. It's just beautiful, you guys. It embossed beautifully, it cut beautifully. I was really impressed with that. I'm gonna have to try a super intricate die and then see how that works. And here I'm just showing you the embossing mat so then you can see the impression that it left as expected. I mean, I didn't expect it not to. So with the Gemini machines, I noticed the embossing mats are super flimsy. Um, I never used them in my previous Gemini, to be honest with you. Now with my Empress machines from Anna Griffin, I do, and they're, they work lovely. So um, that's my actually first time really using embossing mat and all the other Gemini machines I've never used it. I just it did with it it did with it it did what it did with its original plates and or I used a card um, cardstock for a shim to get that extra pressure. So here is one of my favorite favorite embossing folders. So this is a cut emboss folder she came out with a couple years ago. And this is a um, Santoro Gorgeous regular folder so I wanted to try another brand to see how that would work and these papers that I popped in these are like approximate I think I like shoved them into the folder and then just cut around them to make them I didn't cut them all nice and pretty with the guillotine or anything like that so um, but this with this first folder um, I believed I used a navy centura pearl and um, with a gorgeous it's interesting in this part of the video, I'm looking, it looks like it's white cardstock, but to my surprise as I turn it over, it's actually Simpatura Pearl, beautiful blue color that you'll see in a minute. So this one, it calls for the base cutting plate, the magnetic shim, which it does say it's optional, the embossing folder, and then the 
top cutting plate. So this is one of her cut and embossing folders from a few years ago, and it's one of my absolute favorite, favorite embossing folders. I can't remember what the name of it is called right now because I'd already put it away. But I love, love, love this embossing folder. So you're gonna see here in a minute how it came out. So everything cut through like it was supposed to. As I'm showing that, you can see some warping. Um, this actually happened to work okay with um, where it cracks. So there is some cracking where the tree branches are but it, it works good with this because it makes it look like a winter scene. So the little bit of the white core showing through on the branches, but um, I'm trying to show you up close. If you can see that, you see that you guys, the white cracks in the branches, but it works because of what the scene is. So and that's the other side of it, but it is some, there is some warping and that is due to the pressure. This, this machine has tons of pressure and I, I've watched a few other videos and people say that this machine has more pressure than the original Gemini. I'm gonna have to do a comparison video so because I can't really think of right now off the top of my head so there I find out oh look it's a different color I thought it was white colored cardstock but it's actually Centura Pearl it's a beautiful color it's like a green blue color so I bought these folders off Crafter's Companion probably about three or four years ago and I love them. And then I always forget that I have them. And so, so we're putting that through. So we're using the same sandwich. So it's the base, the magnetic is optional, the folder and the um, top cutting plate. So in the booklet, it does tell you uh, which plates are optional if you want to use them. And then they do have different sandwiches for 2D and 3D embossing folders. So here I'm going to take this one out. So it came out really well, but as you can see on the left right there, you can really see it's very obvious, the warping on the paper. So um, that's the only thing I, I wasn't a big fan of. And then I think I had the folder the wrong way too. <laughs> so that's why I opened the folder like, oh. So I do have some of the gorgeous that are cut and boss, and this one is not. This is just a regular folder. I mean, it came out really pretty, and I will use it, but as you can see on the bottom, there is some cracking right there, and there is significant warping on the left side right there. So a lot of that, you guys, when you get that, it has to do with the pressure of the machine and then also the quality of the paper. So Centura Pearl is like, great to use. Um, but, you know, again, it's just the machine, and then maybe the paper just isn't thick enough. So that was my demonstration for the Gemini 2. Um, let me know what you guys think. Um, I have watched a couple of other videos of people um, demonstrating theirs. They did a few same things that I did, some, some different things, but here again is the tablet holder so you can see and then you have some storage there. You have tons of storage for this machine if you want to store anything in it. I don't tend to store anything in my machine so I mean I don't know what people put in their machines. Like the Cricut I can kind of understand like certain things but with the Gemini I don't know what you put in there so um, yeah. So let me know your thoughts on it. If you guys bought it, do you like it? I know a lot of people didn't buy it because they just weren't sold on it. Um, and in this shot, I want to show you, those are my two. That's my Pro, that's my original Gemini Met Metallic, and then that's my Pro, and I have that on a Lazy Susan, as you can see. And, I mean, in a way, it's a similar concept, but the only difference is with this machine, it's not actually sitting on top of something, taking up more space where you actually have to spin it. So if that's a factor for you, if it's not, it saves a lot of space if you don't have to put it on a Lazy Susan. But let me know what you guys think, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.